Guys, we're back with sessions 26, and today it's going to be nursing diagnosis and care planning. That will include nursing diagnosis and assessment intervention, plan of care, the post-op patient from PACU to the surgical floor, fall prevention and anticoagulation therapy. Also, if you would go to dearnurses.net and go to the clinical setting step-by-step chapter 16 either 16 or 18 i believe there's just it's just packed with very helpful information on that topic now let's just talk about this situation here we have a patient we have a nurse and of course her daughter is also a nurse and the patient is saying to the nurse my daughter is a nurse and she does not mind taking care of me what does the nurse say in return it's my pleasure i'm going to have an easy day today I hope that you will never be the nurse who takes care of patients by doing using that technique. It's not going to work. What kind of care planning does a nurse do when she hands over the care of her patient to the visitor? That is totally out of line. It's very important that you manage the care of your own patient. Now we're going to talk a little bit more about how the whole process is put together. When a patient is admitted to the hospital, an assessment of history is done first of all, then an assessment is also done. A nursing diagnosis is usually made based on the information that's provided. Remember, a patient comes in and gives you the signs and symptoms and whatever else has gone wrong, and that's how you base that information. We're going to make do an assessment and intervene. Once you do that intervention, of course, you identify the problems which would be in, uh, identified in the plan of care. And then the plan of care, as you know, is usually updated on a daily basis. Or if the problem is resolved, you address it as such. Now, I'm going to try to discuss with you the surgical patient. I'm going to start out in PACU and walk you through what happens when that patient gets to the surgical floor. This patient has just come out of surgery and is in PACU. Some of you may never have worked in a PACU, but that does not mean you're never going to be faced with that challenge. Here are some of the problems you might have to identify with. A surgical patient should have some oxygen when they arrive in PACU. Reason being, when a patient comes out of surgery, the body's demands for oxygen are a lot greater because most of these patients are hypothermic meaning that their body temperature is very low after being in surgery, after being in a very cold place where they, they probably have their bodies opened up, lots of fluid taken out of their body. So some of them are really cold and shivering. So what are we supposed to do? Warm them up. Make sure we address it in the plan of care that this can happen. You have a patient with cool skin, shivering, a decrease in level of consciousness, needs, needs to be documented. Your plan of care should reflect this patient has the potential for hypothermia. And of course, you can see here this patient has a nice bear hugger, or sometimes it may just be warm blankets to increase the body's temperature. And of course, always document what was done and how you know, you took care of the problem and how the patient progressed following that problem. Another problem that you can see with the surgical patient is dehydration, yes. Remember, many patients who were fasting for surgery and went to surgery late that day, yes, they had IV fluids, but they may have lost fluids in surgery also, especially if drugs like mannitol were used. So we need to pay attention to dehydration, your eyes and nose, record them, you assess the patient whether the heart rate is very high, blood pressure is very low, because these are warning signs of early dehydration. Now, we get to the surgical floor, and both these patients, top and bottom, have different issues. Here we have first the patient who is any patient, surgical patient confined to bed is at risk for uh, post-operative pneumonia. Here's this patient, not very ready to have the breathing exercises, but you as a nurse should set a standard for that patient. You need to do patient education, explain why, because that patient is at risk for lung infection, pneumonia. Turning, coughing, deep breathing, ambulation, these are ways that it can be prevented. And your care plan should reflect, you know, that uh, this potential for pneumonia related to uh, being in the hospital and, of course, the surgery. Another problem is deep vein thrombosis. We know that patients usually have uh, TED hose or those sequential stockings, those that inflate and deflate. 
And of course, if a patient is in tears and is telling you she doesn't want them on, you simply don't say, well, you don't need to. Yes, they need to. You need to explain to that patient that blood clots can happen as a result of being confined to bed and not moving very much. So you do have a responsibility as a nurse to put it down in your plan of care as a problem and how you addressed it. Now, something that people do not stop to consider is when a patient has had surgery, especially when they receive narcotics, there is always, always that danger of, especially with abdominal surgery, a paralytic ileus. What would you expect to find? Abdominal pain, distension, absent bowel sounds. So you need to address that in the plan of care. There is a potential there for paralytic ileus. And what intervention would you do? When you have your plan of care, you'd have to write how to examine the abdomen and so and document your findings, notifying the doctor if everything was, uh, if something obviously was wrong. And let us not forget about falls. Sometimes we give narcotics to patients. Some of them do become disoriented after receiving narcotics. And even that patient who was lucid before you gave it, lights turned down far away from the desk, that patient may get a little confused and wind up on the floor. Yes, it can happen. So in your plan of care, if you have a patient who is at risk for fall, you should really suggest some of the ways it can be prevented. How about putting the bed rails up, a low light in the room, in a corner of the room, and possibly that patient being closer to the desk if they are at risk for falling. Then we're going to talk about the patient on a heparin drip. Heparin is an anticoagulant, and patients are given for many reasons, even DVT. For many reasons, a patient may have to be put on anticoagulant therapy. Sometimes it's even done prophylactically, just to prevent patients from having, uh, they get low doses of heparin. Some of the problems, of course, with a patient on heparin is bleeding, and that should not be ignored. So your plan of care should reflect any patient on anticoagulant therapy is at risk for bleeding check the urine for blood, the dressings might have blood on them, the gums, there might be many places that you might find. So you assess, document, and notify the doctor. So when you have a patient come into the hospital, whether it's a surgical patient or just that patient who is in ICU, regardless of where your patient is, you always have to do your nursing diagnosis. You assess, of course, you document what your interventions are, and you follow that plan of care. It's usually updated every 24 hours. Follow your institution's policies and procedures. And then if the problem is resolved, you report it, record it as such. So it's established that that problem is resolved. I hope you've been able to benefit from this short nursing diagnosis. And like I said, please take the time to go to the clinical settings step by step. DearNurses.net, you'll find more helpful information on care planning and patient education. And stay posted for more clinical issues.